Hey guys, how are you? I'm just giving it one minute so I can come back. I can... Have you guys seen the new ST video? I will it. Have you seen it? That's what I'm playing. I will it. Good karma. Yeah, it's a one minute. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Not follow. Ah, Abula. Abula. Siri. Yeah, I don't call Kaba. I just send you a Fico. Um, I hold on. Hello, yeah. Sorry, guys. Uh huh. Me life like. Go ahead. Yeah, call me when you get there. Call me when you get there. A Fico. We can idle in Gary. Yeah, explain. I left them in there. Yeah. All right, thank you. Hello, guys, and welcome. Let me just end this. Let's listen to Ashley and then it's a good Friday. So I'm gonna end this video here. Interesting video. Um, ST's new song, I Wule, is talking about uh, how somebody goes. I mean, it just reminds me of some of the things I thought Sabali was going through. So I just had to play this video. But I wanted to update you guys this morning whilst I was driving coming to the office. Um, I had a call, and the call was that um, somebody was being moved to Banjul because apparently um, the Supreme Islamic Council um, were in Banjul with the IGP, and there was supposedly a meeting, and he was going to be released. Um, we didn't want to put it out because at that point we had to wait until um, he was released. Um, so um, this morning they took him to uh, Banjul. His lawyer was not there, but he called the lawyer to inform him that this is what they are doing to take me to Banjul. So I wanted you to let you know before he was able to drive there, um, he had called him again to say they wanted me to uh, meet uh, members of the Supreme Islamic Council. Apparently, um, they were the ones who were negotiating, um, negotiating um, to get Sabali released. Um, and after all of the negotiations, after everything, he was, you know, they finally released him. But I want to remind Gambians that people should understand this just didn't happen because 
the negotiations happened. It happened because Gambians spoke out. Gambians came out and spoke about what happened to him, how he was unjustly arrested, how his words were twisted. And everyone pointed out, every single Gambian, whether you supported the government or not, you were on record to say that was wrong. And I think that's what really happened. That was the reason why Sabali was released. That's what I believe. So as we speak, I just spoke to him like a minute ago. Um, he's on his way to back home. After the meeting at the Supreme Islamic Council with the IGP and some elders, we want to also thank the elders, uh, the Supreme Islamic Council elders, because to be honest, uh, this is what Alfal Kanyineke, Ninkube Bangkokan, Mia Lonko, Kulo Mia Lonko Amanyinya, Kulo Mia Lonko Asefitino Wulindi, Alfala Doko Minti Wole Wuli. And they took that real role, they took that leadership. They went there and spoke to the authorities and tried to get them to release the young man. And eventually it went through. So we want to thank um, the Supreme Islamic Council leadership for engaging the police. I, I don't think, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say, to say thank you to the police. No, I'm not going to say that because we were privileged to so many other things that really happened. And I think that is wrong. That should not even happen in the first place. So for me, I think we should uh, recognize the leadership of the Supreme Islamic Council for um, initiating this conversation, because that is what leadership is supposed to be. The leadership is supposed to be uh, people who will always uh, work on getting I think and I think we should thank the leadership um, of the Supreme Islamic Council for start, starting that negotiations. But we also want to, I think it's important also for Gambians to know that, um, I've always said this, I am not interested in um, violent issues, things that are violent, but people speaking out, people like Mahdi Jobate, Mustafa Dabos, the coach Pasa Mbajaos, the Patas, the crew, everybody, Kurubali, everybody across, you know, I see Keksane and all this MC Cham, everybody coming out, youth, everybody, people that agree with Sabali and who don't agree with him, everybody came out. And we all said the reason why a lot of the people were passionate about this is this. If it is Sabali today, it can be you tomorrow. And it's important for people to come out. This has nothing to do with politics. No, some of us are not politicians and we don't belong to any political party. We vote when we want to vote. But what is important is when things like this happen, people to come out and speak up and say why it is important for this not to happen. Because during the other time, you know, we would not have been able to do this. But today it's all of you guys who who, who fought so hard to get to where we are today. So if we're here and we started enjoying all this freedom, I think Gambians don't want to go back to that era. And I think the message has been sent clearly to IGP Sinai and his men that Gambians want to live in a democratic society. And that is why we are not going to be silenced because um, you arrested somebody. No, we are not. And, and, and this is very good. Um, Sabali is released unconditionally. Um, after the meeting, he went back to the PIU to take his phones because, you know, his phones were also kept. So he had to uh, go get good those phones. I spoke to him. He's excited. You know him. He's very in a very good spirit. Um, that's why. Um, and he's very, very. Um, he, he was like, Father, please, I want to thank everybody through your platform because um, Jay had told me the overwhelming support that everybody, even sometimes journalists are not supposed to speak on some of these things because you're news broadcasters. But, you know, he knew the number of people, all the journalists, all the activists, everybody that came out to, um, to support him and, and show solidarity. Um, so um, this is what happened. Um, I think here, I think is the voice of the Gambian people that prevailed. Um, if Sabali did wrong, we were going to say, Sabali, we don't care, you can rot in jail. But I think the reason why a lot of people spoke is because people believe what he said was within the limit of a political operator. And that is why uh, today uh, he's been released. We are glad that he is going to spend time with his family. For me, throughout this ordeal, it's not about Sabali. I said it on my show. I think Sabali has gone through so much. He'll be, he'll be able to handle this. 
but it's the families that you leave behind what they are going through and what they will be going through going into the new years without your your your, your loved one is very painful so as we speak uh, he is with his wife i spoke to him through jay um, he's very excited uh, he's excited to address you all he's very very grateful for the support um he's been released um unconditionally so meaning he's not been charged actually so you know he has not been charged so the, the release is unconditional um he's not going to he's not going to um address this issue um he's not going to jail uh, court for this issue anymore so the release is unconditionally and that is what a lot of you were asking for and that is what happened so um right now he's excited he's on his way home um right now with his family and I think we're also excited um, about the, the movement that has been created by all of you on social media. Um, so this is the update. Uh, Sabali has been released unconditionally and he will be spending uh, New Year's with his family. He is right now leaving the PIU office, going home with his wife. And uh, everything seems to be doing going very well with him right now. He's excited. I spoke to him. He's excited. He's very, very grateful for the support and all of that so once again um it was this morning when he was called to the but he was told that they were taking him to banjo told um to go to banjo to meet the, um to go to how do you call to go to your um to go to banjo to meet with the igp it was there when he got there it was the Supreme Islamic Council leaders, they had a meeting and it was very fruitful. Um, you know, it was something the Supreme Islamic Council were doing with the authorities. And I mean, the reason um, why I'm saying thank you to the Supreme Islamic Council is because, I mean, for an adult, everywhere in our society, Alfalka will be near Kukuja Miyan Kama Nyinya Yatama. Olam Kuti Alfalka Minke. So if ni Alfali Aje Kukule Wekere Miyan Go, hey, Nyinma Nyinya, Andung Atakairo Ulula Bangkoka, finally be IGP aning Supreme Islamic Council molu sabali kumandi sabali ya itata kama nang because I be the custody le from ya sama banjo kafai ko ilaftale inata kuru ya kacha ke kuwa minketa ya ke ya kacha ke kacha la details on that I I don't want to say that here, but I can tell you um, he is released unconditionally. Uh, no more. Um, the good thing is because um, you know a lot of people were worried that they were going to link him to this school member carry, which a lot of people still have issues with. I we will wait until after the investigations, but uh, thank God he is not linked to that, and they realized it was just about that audio. Um, which I have said, I believe so many people have said several times. All of these politicians have said that that way are following a bankota. Um, you know, uh, the, uh, my 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 friend Rambo Jata has said even worse than that. So people have said a lot of things that were worse than this. But um, at the end of the day, I think um, you know, just like what many people said, you know, when people are vocal, and I think this is very good that people, a lot of people spoke up, because uh, you remember there was this audio where you, people were saying um, there are people that they were worried about, um, Momodu Savali, Madi Jovate, and MC Cham. Now, Madi was arrested one time. Uh, MC was called for questioning when they wanted to do press conference and Sabali was also arrested. So it's important that people take note of these anecdotes and, you know, just contextualize things and, 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 and look at things in a broader sense. For me, the reason I have said this several times, um, I don't care, you know, what, uh, who says what and what, what anybody says. In any good democracy, there should be dissenting voices. There should be people who will hold government accountable in a respectful way. But we cannot all say that we are all going to be pro-government. When we do that, then that even is not good for our government. Political operators should be able to um, operate within the realms of the power. They should be able to hold government accountable. That is even good for government because that way, government, because, you know, if you're close to power, you don't tell power all the good, all the truth. You don't tell them those things. So 
people outside the opposition and the civil society and the activists they are the ones who come out and tell government no this is wrong no you're not doing this and challenge them on issues that makes it better for us the citizens so that's why i've always said it's good for government to accept that there will be people who will criticize them there will be people who will say negative things about them that is okay that only strengthens our democracies. That is why we need more Madi Jobates, we need more Sabalis, we need more MC Chams, we need a lot more people doing that. Because that is not like hating on the government or hating on President Barak. That is strengthening our democracy. And everybody should understand that. I see a lot of people say, oh, Father Ture, she's very hypocritical. She, she, she hates this government. Oh, I don't have a reason to hate any government. I don't have the reason to hate President Barrow. No, I don't. I actually love President Barrow. But I think it's important for people to understand the role people have in society. For us, our role is to amplify people's message being government, being opposition, being activists. And we are going to do that. You cannot expect us to just do one-sided reporting when it is about government, we put it out. When we put government statements and press releases, you don't complain. When we put government's uh, opposition's stories or their press conferences or their reports or their opinions, you have an issue with that. That is wrong. Our role is to give everybody the platform. And I think that is what we are doing and we will continue to do that. But um, I think um, this, the message this sends is that Gambian people spoke up. They knew the Sabali arrest was not right. People came out and said this was wrong. Even those that disagree with Sabali politically, they came out and said, no, this is wrong. And the government listened. They knew people are not joking about this and they listened. And that is the good thing. Once they are listening to us, that is good. We also have to speak with respect and, 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 and with sanity and make sure that whatever we are saying, we're basing it on facts. Those things are important. So this is why I wanted to come here and update you on this issue. I think we're all excited that Sabal is going home and um, he will be addressing you guys when he's rested. Um, I don't know when and how. But um, I just spoke to him and he's very excited. He's on his way uh, home. He was just picking up his phone where it was kept, you know, because you, if you're in detention, you don't have access to your phone. But yes, he's doing very well. He's doing fine. He will be spending the Christmas and uh, the New Year's with his family. Jay is very excited. So I want to thank you all. Just wanted to come here and uh, give you this update that Sabali is released and it's unconditional. Um, no conditions attached to his release. And uh, I think it's important for the police to understand that um, the police officers are our, they are there to protect the, uh, us, our lives and properties. And sometimes um, what we see, how they operate, it gets scary. Especially, I'm sure a lot of you all saw the protest that was organized, throwing tear gas on innocent protesters. It's not the way to do things. And I think these are things that people should learn from what happened. I said this, um, I was saying to somebody in my Yaya Jame voice, people should understand. Yaya Jame kept saying this and uh, people were laughing about it, but we, I'm sure we didn't understand the context. Kunung, yesterday, be an insoma. To yesterday, um, IGP Sanyang, you were not the IGP. You were what, deputy IGP? Today you are the IGP, but tomorrow surely you will not be there. Transitions, people come and go, positions stay. So your records will always stay. Your records, and I want to give this anecdote. Uh, there was this particular person, I don't want to name it. Um, there was a report that we, we wrote about him when it comes to the TRRC. And this person was reaching out to us to, to help delete that story because it was he's now working in the international. And whenever they Google him, they were trying to renew his contract. And Apparently, this story keeps coming up, and it was written to the TRRC what he had done in the former former regime, and he kept on begging and begging for us to delete that story. And I sat down and I was talking to a friend. I said, you know, when you talk to them, they will tell you, I don't care. When they are maltreating people, when they are malhandling citizens, and they are doing all of these things, they will, some of them will tell you, I don't care. But you know, when will you care? 
when it's written all over the internet, the stories are on websites, these things don't go away. Tomorrow, when you want to do something, in this day and age, whatever you do, it is, it is the internet. They search you. They Google you. The first thing they do, they Google you when they're looking for jobs, international jobs especially. Now, if all the time stuff like this, you are linked to malhandling people, you are linked to doing illegal stuff. Look, the police have the right to arrest. I'm not saying they cannot arrest. You have a right to arrest. You have a right to, to detain you, but you have the right to all of these things. But you are bounded by the law. Now, if you do things that are beyond your powers and it's written, it is there on your record. Today might be okay, but tomorrow, when you go work in the international level, these are the things that will come, right? And it's going to affect you. So I just wanted to put this out to some of our officials to be cautious because this is something that happened just last week. And for that person to get his contract renewed, that is the only story that is coming up right now. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? So it can be you today. It can be me. It can be another person. Um, that's why I keep reminding myself and you and every other person, especially our law enforcement officers, people who are in government, you know, do, do good by yourself. Because if you do good by people, you're doing it to yourself because it's just going to catch up with you tomorrow. So it's important that we always be guided by law so that these things um, tomorrow, you're not even harming yourself, you know. But I'm happy that um, Sabali will come out. He will address... Um, um, he will address whatever happened to him himself, but we wanted to just update you guys as to, you know, um, his release, unconditional release, um, you know, is, is important. And I'm, 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 I'm sure I'm happy, but a lot of you are more happy about, you know, uh, what, you know, the struggle that, you know, he's been going through and how a lot of people felt that he was unjustly um, treated. But I also hope the police will learn from this and understand that, um, you know, every Gambian has a right to, to speak up. And when they speak up, they don't hate government. I keep saying this and people saying, are you trying to justify all the things you're saying? No, we are not. But people should understand when people speak, they are not against government. In fact, they're helping the government to, 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 to adjust to adjust because sometimes I call my friends and tell them in government, I tell them all the things that I'm not happy about. And I come on my show and I say it there because that's the platform I have, right? But when I say it in a very respectful way, I hope they learn from some of the things I say. I'm not an expert in all those things, but it's my observation and I'm free to say it. And other people also are free to talk about their observations about how the country is running and how things are happening. So I think that is not a crime. And that's why a lot of us supported Sabali because like I said, if he did otherwise, we would not be supporting him. But we felt that what he said was not beyond what other people have been saying. So yes, so I want to thank you all. Uh, this is the update. Sabali has been released. He is on his way going home. So he will be, um, he will be speaking when he's ready as to what happened the conditions of his bail and everything. I don't want to say those things, but um, I want to tell you he is released and he's in a very good spirit. You know, all those people who visited him told us he has always been in a good spirit. You know, he is not broken. Um, he's doing very well, um, but he will be telling you himself. He will be talking to you about his, his story. Thank you very much. Just wanted to come here and update you guys. Bye-bye and happy Happy New Year in advance. Um, today is 30th. Tomorrow is uh, New Year's. And we want to wish you all a happy New Year um, in advance. I hope 2023 becomes a better year for all of us to be able to um, uh, practice democracy. Um, I mean, I, I've said this, look, there has been a lot of changes. Today, I can sit here and say these things and not worry about being arrested. Right. I hope that continues. And that's what we want. Right. That's what all of you fight for. Um, and today we're enjoying that and we want that to continue. So I hope 2022 becomes even better uh, for, for Gambia, for all of you Gambians. And most importantly, to our followers who have been following us all these years and supporting uh, the network. We thank you very much and we wish you all a happy new year in advance.
Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm on, I'm on a break on my show, so I will be on a one month break. My season is closed unless and until I have a special interview. Unless somebody wants to sit down with me, right? I'll be back. But if not, I'm going to be on a one month break for one month, and the season will be back um, next year, end of January. Thank you very much, and bye bye to you all. Bye bye. Bye bye. Let me play some ST for you before I leave. It's this new song. Guys, you guys have to listen to Pamodo. I have Pamodo on the line. Pamodo, I'm live. You want me to put you on live? <laughs> Come be live. Let me get it. Yes, yeah, but yeah. Okay. Madunga fai sign sign. Ha, madunga fai. Yeah. I'm live at Okay. Okay, but I'm fine. Yeah, okay. All right. Guys, okay. Bye-bye. I'm going to have to go now. So I will see you next year. But I might be, if somebody accepts to give me an interview, I might come or some other person. But I am going away. Please listen to this SD song. The relax is mad. He's talking about all the things, you know, you pay insurance. He's talking about the hardship. He's talking about New Jawia. Lakira can remind ko Lakira Bijel and Dimbau Letale. Man, you guys have to listen. SD is a preacher. He preaches. You have to listen. Actually, he's my favorite also. So I'm sorry. Bye. See you again. See you next year, inshallah. Bye bye.